Did you know that during the last global recession, men lost more jobs than women? And the reason was simple. There were more men in the workforce compared to women, and men dominated the industries that were hit hardest by the recession, like construction and manufacturing. The 2009 recession was widely headlined as the man session. It's been over a decade. The composition of the global workforce has changed. More women have joined the payroll. But the pandemic is threatening to put an end to their careers and financial independence. You see, the Wuhan virus has upended a woman's work-life balance. She's juggling work and caregiving duties. Schools are closed, so children are home. Daycares are also closed, so toddlers too are home during work hours. They need care and attention. They need food on time. Who takes care of all of this? Women. It's an unsaid and socially arranged task, and it is universal. Whether you're Indian or American, whether you're Irish or watching us from Australia, it is the same everywhere. And you will agree that when it comes to caregiving, a gender role reversal is an exception. The job is unpaid. It comes with no economic security. And in times like these, it jeopardizes a woman's source of livelihood, her office job. Deloitte surveyed nearly 400 working women across countries. 82% of them said that their lives have been disrupted by the pandemic. 70% said they're concerned that their career growth may be limited by the pandemic. And this crisis has forced women to play multiple roles, juggling more than they were doing before. They're teachers to their young children who attend classes from home. They help them cope with online learning, battle COVID anxiety, the stress of not being able to go out and play or meet their friends. The pandemic has also shut out professional caregivers. So a woman is also taking care of the elderly parents at home, also the specially abled. And all of this has to be done while meeting work deadlines. It is not an easy job. So women around the world are burned out. In the US alone, more than 2.3 million women have left the workforce since February 2020. Women's participation in the labor force has dipped to rates not seen since 1988, meaning lower than the 2009 recession. And this is according to America's National Women's Law Center. It says, in December 2020 alone, women accounted for 100% of the jobs lost. One in four women in America are considering leaving the workforce or downshifting their careers. According to a McKinsey study, women are one and a half times more likely to downshift their roles or leave the workforce because of this pandemic. And this trend, too, is universal. According to a survey by the Royal Bank of Scotland, 71% of business women in the UK have found the pandemic extremely stressful, as opposed to 55% of the male entrepreneurs. In India, female labor force participation rate fell to 20.3% in 2020. Women accounted for 13.9% of job losses in April 2020. That's within a month of India's lockdown. Experts say working moms left the workforce faster than the rest. In France, when the employment rate for women remained relatively stable through the pandemic, a survey found that working mothers were putting at least four additional hours per day into caregiving and domestic chores. They were also putting up with domestic violence. It increased 30% during the first lockdown in France. The statistics are grim, the crisis all the more. Two years into this pandemic, it has only exacerbated. Women today are not okay. Many of them need support. The question is, who is helping them? What are governments doing? Australia is pumping money into childcare. At least 1.7 billion US dollars. The idea is to help women return to work while state funded care facilities take care of the children. What about other countries? France chose to keep schools and daycares open during its second lockdown to help mothers return to work. Was it the safest option? Well, France believes so, given that the initial variants of the virus did not seem to affect school going children so much. What about corporates? What are they doing to help women employees? The pandemic has threatened to widen the gender pay gap. The world could lose women in leadership roles and corporates will feel the pinch. And I will tell you why. Studies show that company profits and share performance are 50% higher when women are well represented in leadership. Women in the workplace help companies embrace more employee-friendly policies. Women in the workforce help in bridging gender and racial gaps.
The pandemic is threatening to put an end to generations of struggle for diversity, for equality. Women are 11 times more unlikely to return to work when the pandemic ends. So what can we do? We can try to change this, create awareness, create a more empathetic workplace, share responsibility at home. As we count down to Mother's Day, help working mothers chase their dream, reach new heights. Don't let the pandemic clip their wings. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.